And now let's walk you through all the features of the application. This is the main run screen. It is meant to show you the real-time status of your machine flow at a glance. The icons at the top of the screen show you the work switch status and whether or not your drill is raised or lowered. Green means it is lowered and white means it is raised. If the icon is not showing the correct status, you will need to invert your work switch in the settings page. To the right is the mass flow indicator. You'll notice that my screen shows two numbers, and that is because I am monitoring two product flows. These mass flow numbers do not correlate to any specific rate. They are an indication of the total energy flowing through the system. Things that can affect this measurement are the product application rate and the fan speed, for example. Under normal operation, at a steady rate and fan speed, these numbers should not fluctuate too much, and you will get used to what number is being displayed. If the number changes when you're not expecting it, it can help you identify problems with your machine. Some examples of problems some of our customers have seen are a cart lid was not sealed properly and the mass flow number was lower than usual. Or product in the cart could bridge above the meter and the mass flow number may drop, but the sensors on each run continue to hear product flow. And to the right of that, you can see the history icon to display a record of any recent blockages or flow problems. Now to the right of that on my screen you will see a demo icon. In normal operation you will not see this. In the very top right hand corner you will see a big red X. Pressing this button will completely exit and close the application. Just press yes to confirm. Don't worry, if you press this button, you will not lose any of your configuration information. Simply open the app up from the home screen again, and you'll be up and running. Over on the very left-hand side of the screen, these icons will give you access to supporting information, such as data logging, where you can start a one-minute flow capture to understand the flow balance of the machine to see if you have any major flow problems in any section. It is normal to have flow variations from manifold to manifold, but if the numbers change drastically over time, this feature can help you average out the readings to highlight any major problems. Below that, you will see all the guides and manuals for the system. Simply tap any of the documents for quick reference right at your fingertips. Going back to the run screen, we have one button remaining on the left side of the home screen. Pressing this will get you to the settings menu. We've taken care to put everything on one page so you don't have to flip through many pages just to make a few adjustments. I will walk you through what each setting is. Under general settings you can choose whether or not you receive an audible alarm for blocked runs and if any ECU is offline for any reason. While the run screen will still visually indicate a blockage or an offline ECU, we still recommend you leave these on in case you are not looking at the screen at all times. Now under the flow rate section, you can tap the info button to see a description of when you would use each setting. Under most conditions, you will use the normal flow setting for beans and wheat and other major crop types. But for products like canola, flax, alfalfa, or grass seeds, you may want to use the low setting if it's not working as expected. The very low selection should be rarely used, but can also be used on crops like sunflowers. Please note, however, that you cannot use the very low setting if you have section control enabled. You can make these flow rate adjustments for both product types. Under the mass flow section, you can select the info icon to see a description. As noted earlier, this is a measure of total product flow throughout the entire system. The mass flow rate is an arbitrary number and does not correspond to a specific unit of measurement. Set the mass flow alarms to alert you when the mass flow numbers are outside of your typical flow thresholds. After you've used the app for a while, you'll know what is normal for your system and be able to set your thresholds based on that. You can enable and disable mass flow alarms with this switch and set your alarm thresholds for each product type by adjusting the sliders below. Again, you will understand what normal looks like 
after you've used the system for a while. Moving on, you'll see the Support Info section. This section is very helpful if you ever need to call your dealer or Intelligent Ag for support reasons. We will want to know the app and device version numbers. Also, if you're having problem that the dealer or Intelligent Ag is having a hard time troubleshooting, you can access the Diagnostic Data section. By turning this on, it will record a variety of critical information that will help us determine what may be happening. When you log data, the files will appear in the list. You can then select the files you'd like to send us and click the Share button in the top right-hand corner of the screen. You can then airdrop them to your phone and email them to the support team or place them in an email on your iPad to be sent when you're connected to the Internet. You can also delete any log files by selecting the files and clicking Delete. You can also access the ECU hardware and software version numbers in the Support Info section. And moving over to the right column, we have Alarms and Notifications. Here you can adjust your alarm delay timing, the alarm volume, and enable or disable background notifications. Under that is the Work Switch section. Here you can tap to make adjustments to your section control settings. You can enable or disable the section control sensing feature. We call this a sensing feature because we do not really know if your section was turned off or not. Based on the settings below, you can adjust the conditions under which you would like to be alarmed or not alarmed if a section is turned off. All this does is disable the audible alarm when a section is turned off by your system. You will still be able to see the section gray out on the screen, so if you weren't expecting the section to be turned off, you will see there was a problem. Again, it is important to note that with this feature enabled, you will not receive an audible alarm if there is a blockage that occurs on the entire tower or manifold. You will need to watch the screen to make sure the system is operating as you expect. Now going back, we can adjust which ECU has the work switch connected to it. If we had to move it or didn't select it correctly during the initial configuration, for example. Below that, you can also invert the work switch if the status is indicating the machine is lowered when it is actually raised, or vice versa. Under the Equipment Info section, you can adjust how you visualize information on the main run screen. By changing from the manifold view to the row view, you will see the information laid out across the machine like this. Because I have a dual shoot system, you can now see the status of each row easily and the variance of each manifold above that. Which view you choose is really your preference, but please note that you may need to configure your port assignments in each ECU when changing view types. I will go back and change this to the manifold view again. By going back to settings, notice how the three icons that were on the left of the screen are now at the bottom of the screen due to space reasons. Click the gear to return to settings and change the view back to manifold view. Here you can also change if your rows are numbered in a clockwise or counterclockwise orientation on the manifold. Our default is always clockwise. Below that, under the Section Variance area, you can enable or disable Section Variance alarms. Disabling this feature will also disable the visual indication you see on the run screen. In this example, we will receive an audible alarm if any of our section's product flows are plus or minus 20% of the average of that particular product type. Again, it is normal to have some fluctuation with this number, so make adjustments to this number after you know how your machine is looking under acceptable operation. And finally, under Setup and Installation, you can click the Setup Wizard to go completely through the setup process again, or you can choose to edit the ECU and sensor configurations with the Edit Config button. This is where you will go if you ever need to reassign a sensor to a different port or exchange any hardware for some reason. And that was an extensive overview of the settings page. Let's go back to the main run screen and finish up.
Here you can see my work switch is indicating the toolbar is lowered, and my mass flow numbers are indicating that product A is below the threshold I have set in the settings page. I may want to check something out or adjust my threshold if I've determined everything is fine. To the right of that you can see that my blockage history shows a nice record of any blockages in case I missed something and wasn't sure what manifold or row it was on. On each manifold or section you can see each row in gray is performing as normal. On manifold number 5 you can see I have one row blocked and occasionally the entire manifold flow value is turning the manifold orange. This is because I have the manifold variance value set to 20%. I may want to check out if I have any airflow or metering problems like bridging above that part of the meter. Maybe I have a big chunk of fertilizer stuck in my manifold. Maybe one of my primary hoses has a hole worn through it. Or perhaps I am just on a steep side hill. This number can help you identify those situations and more if it gets out of your comfort zone. You'll also notice that the right side of my machine is showing all blocked, but they have grayed out a bit. That's because my drill has section control and those sections are currently off. I can still visually see that there is no flow, but I'm not getting an audible alarm. Anytime there is a new alarm, you will get an audible alarm. Simply tap anywhere on the screen to silence and acknowledge the alarm. It will no longer alarm unless it's a new alarm and it has been detected longer than your alarm delay setting.